Do you ever wish you could secure the profitability of an individual item outside of your templates? In this video, I'm going to show you not one, but two different ways that you can set individual price minimums and maximums in Reprice It. Coming up now. Hello everyone, it's Manny from Manny's Book Bag. I'm back with another video. Today we're going to do another Reprice It walkthrough. What I'm going to show you today is the two different ways that I have added individual price minimums and maximums on items. Now while it is always best to constantly improve your templates and keep zeroing in on their goals so that you don't have to do this, there are going to be times when setting an individual minimum and maximum price is not only appropriate but the right way to do things. I generally don't do this anymore but I'll give you a good example. I do have a template that works on retail arbitrage items specifically. While I'm really comfortable with the rules that this template has set, setting those price minimums and maximums individually really does secure profitability for me. With that being said, I'm going to launch right into the first way that I add individual price minimums and maximums on items. The first way that I add individual parameters is as an extra step during listing. When I do add retail arbitrage items, for example, I do it while I list. And what I do is I have a separate window open in Reprice It, and I'll come up here in the main menu on the dashboard to Item Settings. Once I'm in the Item Settings list, I come down here to Add Individual Items. Now this is yet another reason why creating your own individual SKUs is a great advantage. What I do after my listing software creates the SKUs based on the prefixes I set is that I copy it and then I paste it into this box right here. From there, as you can see, I would put in the minimum price that I would allow it to sell it for. This will avoid a race to the bottom. But I'll also put in a maximum price to avoid the race to the top. We don't often talk about the race to the top, but it's a very real thing where if everyone is set to match, but someone is set to go a penny behind you to do the opposite of undercutting you and you're constantly matching well they're going back a penny and then when you reprice you go up one and so on and so forth and that is yet another way that you can see items that are priced into the hundreds if not thousands another nice feature here if you don't want to come up with a price minimum and maximum you can enter the cost of your item here and then you can put in your your profit uh, markup or loss parameters here. So if I have a cost of $5, but I want to make sure that the lowest profit I'm going to get is 50% on that, I would put 0 0.50 in this box here. As I said before, I find this to be the easiest way to add new retail arbitrage SKUs, but generally speaking for my books and my CDs, I let the templates take over. Now we're going to go back to the item settings main menu to show you the second way that you can enter price minimums and maximums. So when I added the parameters as a part of the listing process, I went here to add individual items. But let's say that I don't want to take the time during the listing process and instead I want to go back later and set an individual floor or ceiling on a price after the listing process is done. Your second option is to add a new item from your current inventory list right here. Now if you just listed the item, the item will not naturally show up on this list uh, for some time after you list. Generally speaking, I don't see the item pop up on the inventory list for a good 12 to 24 hours. But this is the total list of your inventory and you will notice that listing date is highlighted so they naturally populate from newest listing date to oldest. What I like about this list is that it is sortable. You have fields for ASINs, for the generated SKUs, for the title, which I will explain why it comes really handy in a minute, uh, the condition, the listing date, the price that is set, and then we have this final column here. First back to the title. If you ever find that you have to go and you have to research an individual item, 
what I want you to know is that this title right here is sortable. So if I want it to source by title, everything will actually go alphabetical. And that will make it really easy to find an item as opposed to trying to remember when it was listed. But back to the final column here. The final column is add slash update an item setting. Now if you have add in this particular column, that means that it does not have an individual price maximum or minimum. If it says update, that means that there are already values in those fields. If I wanted to take an item that was recently listed, and let's say it was on this front page for example, I would click on add. And the rest of it is going to look very similar to the original way that I showed you. The SKU will already be there for you, but generally speaking, you would put in your minimum price and your maximum price. Or if you wanted to go the way of cost, you would just put in your cost here, as well as your specific parameters for how much cost you're willing to profit or lose. Something very important that you should keep in mind if you are ever setting individual prices. In the future, if you do go the way of creating templates, you should know that the individual prices that you update into this list are going to supersede any minimums or any maximums that are in any template. So if your lowest price is $9.99, but you have a minimum on a particular item of $7.99, that $7.99 is going to win every single time. I've seen it happen in the groups where someone will ask a question where they don't understand why the repricer price below their minimum and almost always the answer is that you have an individual parameter set in this list. And that's all I've got for you today folks. Just a quick easy video to show you that you have other options besides just use of templates. If you like this video and you want me to make more of them please remember to share, like, and subscribe this video to support the channel. If you haven't liked the video, smash that like button for me right now. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure you hit that book bag in the corner. That's going to set you up with notifications to let you know when new videos drop. Until next time, let's go make some money.